This is why these things are happening. And if we can't get the people to come back, the community to come back, get the preachers to come back to God's old way, start, give me, give me, give me a book, give me Jeremiah chapter 16, if I'm not mistaken, or 6. I want the scripture where it says, seek ye the old path, and when you find it, walk there. In Jeremiah chapter 6, 16, one of them, find that scripture for me, and we'll start with that on tonight. And if we, if we don't, if we don't, if we don't do that, saints, it might be Jeremiah 8 or one of them in there. Jeremiah 16, somebody find that scripture for me. Go to Jeremiah chapter 16, I know. Jeremiah chapter 6 is what the scripture is. But I want to turn to Jeremiah 16. Uh, turn to Jeremiah 16 for just a second. We, we started with this. On last week. And we read verse number. Verse number 10, we'll get right to the. It had a whole lot of things happening in Jeremiah day. Read verse number 10. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt show this people all these words, and they shall say unto thee, Wherefore hath the Lord pronounced all this great evil against us? Or what is our iniquity? Or what is our sin that we have committed against the Lord our see, God? And people don't look at it like that. They don't look at it like that. If you are a son or daughter of the Most High God, if you're a saint, if you are a Christian of the Most High God, Satan just can't come into your life without God aiding him, allowing him permission. And if things are going on, look, you know, we ought to just look back and evaluate some things. God, why are all of these things? Nobody's asking it. That's what Jeremiah said. Nobody's asking why are all of these things happening. Let's look at it in verse number 11. Then shalt thou say unto them, because your fathers have forsaken they, me. What did they do? Your fathers have forsaken me. They have me. forsaken them. Read on. Said the Lord, and I have walked after other gods, and have served them, and have worshipped them, and have forsaken me, and have not kept, not kept my law. What did they not do, son? Not kept his law. That's the number one reason that we're in the shape that we're in today. Yes, sir. We did everything with the laws of God, but kept them. We did everything with them, but kept them. And for that reason, all of these things have happened. Look at it, verse number 13, and then we're back up to chapter 6, and then the brother get ready to come forward. Verse number 13 says, Therefore will I cast you out of this land into a land that ye know not, <laughs> neither ye nor your fathers. Uh, listen, how do you think we got in this land? <laughs> now you sing, we sing the song, my auntie sing it, Lord, don't you know, I have no friend like you. If over yonder God is not my home, tell me what shall I do? And it's not talking about just dying, but getting back to the land where God promised us at. Read on down. Verse 13, finish it. And there shall ye serve other gods day and night, where I will not show you favor. Look at, let's look around. Is God showing favor now? Don't even seem like he's showing much favor in some of the churches. Look around, saints. Just look around. Come back to chapter 6, and then we're getting ready to, our brothers are getting ready to go. Chapter 6. Jeremiah chapter 6. And verse number. And we go right to the point. But I, rec I highly recommend 19. you read this. 19. Verse number 16. Thus said the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for, all, for the old paths. Where is the good way and walk therein? All right, listen. God says, go back to church. And then I want you to ask these brothers, brother, where, where is the good way at? Where is the old path? 
And when, when these brothers offended with you tonight, they're going to give you the good way. They're going to take you back to the law. But it's the old way. It's the old path. And when we give you that, all you got to do is walk in it. Listen at this, Zaina. You know what so many people are going to say? Listen, so many people are going to say, we don't have to keep the law, and we don't have to do this, and we don't have to do this. Look at what Jeremiah said. He preaching the same thing that I'm preaching right here. Come on, read, read the text. And come over some. So, Zaina, but they said. Make sure he's on there. Make sure that thing, if, it is, if it's not, back it up. Do know what they say? But they said, we will not walk therein. Now listen, God, the man of God told them, come on back. Keep the covenant. Keep the law. Walk in the good way, in the good path where the old way is. A good way where the old path is. But what did they say? But we will not. They, but they said, we will <laughs> not walk therein. They're not going to keep the law in other words. Come on down, verse 17. Also, I said, watchmen over you, saying... Hearken to the sound of the trumpet, but they said we will not hearken. Listen, that's what who, who, we are the watchmen. We are the articles of God. We're the mouthpiece for God. We're his sons and daughters. He sent them, he sent us. And still people won't do it. Verse number 18 says, Therefore, hear ye nations and know, O congregation, what is among them. Mm -hmm. Hear, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my words, nor to my law, but rejected. Listen, that, that's the whole text right there. That's what we want to talk to you about on tonight. All of this calamity, God released it because the people wouldn't listen to his law, nor heed his word, but they rejected it. And for that reason, verse number 19 said, we deal with the blessing of calamity. All because we wouldn't keep his law. That was all of it. That was verse 19. So we're getting ready. And, and listen, tonight, I hope we have time to get into this tonight a little bit. The law that Christ fulfilled... The law that he did away with. The law that he nailed to the tree. <laughs> He's here. I want to show you that tonight. Again, we truly we thank God for you, for all that's viewing us. Brother Cedric, Pastor Adams, and all of my other preacher brothers and friends that's viewing us. Bishop Smith, we thank God for you all. Listen, if you are, if we teach this thing, the old path, what God called, and Jeremiah said, a good way. What, if we can get you to do it, we can save you, son. Come on, give God a shout of hallelujah on tonight. Listen, our brother, hallelujah. Brother Jackson is getting ready to come. Brother Marquette is coming after that. And then our elder brother, Ella Tucker, Wayne is coming. And then we're just going to come back and we're going to sit down and talk. These are short messages. All, they're each are about 15 minutes or so with them. So bear with the brothers on tonight. And again, listen, we beg you to come back. Or we're going to be back next week and the week after, week after. And we're going to talk the history of Israel every Sabbath. So come back. We want to talk with you and show you some things on tonight. Give me a shout of hallelujah for our brother as he comes. Bless hallelujah. you, brother. Shalom. Shalom. The title of my message is The Commandments Are the Way. Again, the title is The Commandments Are the Way. So, there are so many things that are going on around the world, and not just around the world, but even in your, your own community. People doing, and, people doing any and everything that they want or think that is right. Kids have no guidance, and neither do the adults. But people are looking for help, and it's sad to say, but they consistently look in the wrong, dis wrong directions. We look to grandma, but grandma's hands can't fix this. We also look to the government, but they, can't get, but they can't get it all together either. But the one we need to look to is the Father. And I, and I can tell you he wants you to turn to him because he said it over and over and over again throughout his word. And eventually, he's not going to say it anymore. But right now, let's see a time he said turn to him. So let's go to Second Chronicles 7 and read verse 14. Second Chronicles 7 and verse 14. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. 
The Father is, is saying, turn from the things that you've been doing. And when you turn from that, turn to me. And when you turn to me, then I will hear, forgive, and heal. God simply wants us to return unto him so he can do, do things in our lives that will stop all this nonsense. That way we can, be living the, we can not be living the curses and be living the blessings. But if we turn to him, what is, what is it we need to partake of? Or what is, what is it he wants us to get back to? So let's go to Isaiah 55 and read verse 1 through 3. Isaiah 55, verses 1 through 3. Ho, everyone that thirsted, come ye to the waters. And he that had no money, come ye, buy and eat. Yeah, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfy not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good. And let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear and come unto me. Hear and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you. Even the sure mercies of David. We are dealing with trying to get this solution to all that's going on around the world. So what he wants us to do is come and eat. And put this word down up in you. And you know what? You can come over here to the Bible study group of Israel. We love to partake in it. And one of the best things is, you don't have to bring anything with you. All he needs is for you to come and receive his word. That's why he says, seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all other things will be added unto you. And that's Luke 6 and 33. But what is, but what is this he wants us to eat and give ear to that will be a part of this everlasting covenant? Yeah. What will be this thing or things we need to do to solve these issues? Let's go to James 1 and read verses 21 through 25. James 1, 21 through 25. And go ahead, brother. Where, <clears throat> wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and super, superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any, if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the word, this man shall be blessed in his deed. First and foremost, once again, he puts before us saying, lay down the things you used to do and take hold of this word and this perfect law of liberty or, and, be, and take hold of this word and this perfect law of liberty and be a doer of it. So don't be leaning on your own understanding, but in all, but in all that you do, acknowledge the Father and he will direct you. And this is why we are here tonight, because we see all the wickedness going on, but we didn't go to grandma or the government. But we acknowledge the Father, and he directed us to come teach this word and help spread what the solution to this is. And that leads us straight into this perfect law of liberty. Psalms 19, 7 and 8 says, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony, the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise and simple. The statutes of the Lord are, are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. It's simply the commandments. But just to make sure, Romans 7 and 12 also tells us that it's holy, it's just, and it's good. And if you not, and if you not only be a hearer but a doer, you'll become perfect as well. Because this, is, this will convert your soul and make you wise. So now let's go to Romans 7 and read verses 9 through 13 to see uh, exactly what these, what, this, what these commandments will do for you. And when you go there, brother, just read verse 9 first. For I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. Just to say that before he knew the commandments, he was living however he, de he desired to live. And we can see that we can see many that live this way nowadays. But then he partook of the commandments and that's when sin revived or he came to know what sin is and he died. And by he, he's saying that sinner he was died or at least started to die away. 
And now read verse 10. And the commandment which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. For sin, read, read 11, yeah. for sin taken occasion by the commandment, deceived me, and by it slew me. All right. He found out that what he saw to be life was also found to, to be able to kill away the bad things in his life. And this can do the exact same for you. Because just as he says in verse 11, sin is deceiving so many people that it's basically the normal now and it's killing so many. But now read verse 12 and 13. Wherefore the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good. Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid. But sin that it might appear in sin working death in me by that which is good that sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. He is saying the commandment didn't come and literally kill him but it helped him understand what sin is and he was able to notice and steer clear of that and kill off that sinner he once was. And also on top of that the, the little sins that he was doing became greater or it seemed greater because he knew what it was and what it would do unto him. So now imagine if everyone did this and held fast to it daily, then all the nonsense would shy away. There's also something he wants us to do once we partake of this. Deuteronomy 11 and 19 says, teach your children every chance you get. When you're sitting in the house, I want you to teach them. When you're walking by the way, I want you to teach them. And when you're getting up in the morning, I want you to teach them. And, and the reason why is because Proverbs 22 and 6 says, if you train up a child in the way they should go, th then they won't depart from it. And if they don't depart from it, then they will train their children as well, and so on and so forth. And the Lord knows we need this right now. But imagine if the kids weren't, 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 talking, back to the, weren't talking back, but respecting their parents and living this word alongside with their parents. So simple to say that if we come back to God and eat of this bread and drink of his milk or partake of this, this perfect law, then we will get the solution we've not only been searching for, but we will get the solution we desperately need in this world today. And now because you've submitted yourself to God, the devil is fleeing from you. This perfect law found in Exodus 20, the Ten Commandments, is your salvation. Take hold of all ten of these. And I'm going to say that again. Take hold of all ten of these. For unto, for unto God and six unto your fellow men, your fellow men and women, for your salvation. Because just as Revelation 22 and 14 says that those that keep his commandments will be able to walk into the gates of the city, which is New Jerusalem. This way, which is his way, isn't a burden and neither is it grievous. This is the only way to actually love God as stated in 1 John 5, 2 through 3. So come eat. Come indulge and come live in this perfect law, which is the commandments. This is life. This is love. This is your salvation. So I leave you with two scriptures. And one because people will say otherwise. So 1 John 4 and 1. We're going to go there and read that real quick. 1 John uh, 4 and 1. When you get there, brother, you can read. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Just to say, don't believe what everyone is telling you, but go back and test their words according to the word of God and make sure that they are rightly dividing the word of truth. Then Isaiah 8 and 20 says, if they teach not from the law and according to the testimony, then there is no light or truth in them. They also have to be able to do Isaiah 28 and 10. And let's go precept upon precept and line upon line. He go here a little and there a little. Or basically just make the word walk. Let it speak for itself. And if none of that is happening, then maybe don't listen to those people. But I leave you with this today. Deuteronomy 30 verses 19 and 20 says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, that, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life, and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swore unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. And say shalom and hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, give God a shout of hallelujah. hallelujah. Listen, again, we... 
we have the solution to all to the problem to all of this stuff that's going on in the world and god have impressed it upon us to come and try to show you these things now what we're doing we're doing kind of in a roundabout way my next brother is getting ready to come up everything that we're teaching is to uplift and glorify god and try to bring you back in and under the bond of the covenant, what this brother talked about. Come on, give God a shout hallelujah to the next brother come. Shalom, son. Hope everybody having a good week so far. That was a good message our brother LD just did, brother Jackson just did. And I'm going to take it right on with it and walk this word. The title of my message is they are still profitable, keep them. And by they, I mean the commandments. Because today's time, we see a lot of people constantly saying that these things was done away with and we don't have to keep them anymore. When, uh, we have a lot of people saying that we don't have to keep the Old Testament anymore. And they don't understand or don't realize that you can't have the new without the old because you got to go back to Torah for everything that you read for and you can find everything in Torah. No matter what it is in the New Testament, I can guarantee you, you can find it in the old just as well. And we're going to start this in 1 John 2 and 1. And we're going to see when was these commandments established first before I show you some more things. Let's, let us go to 1 John 2 and 1. My little children, these things I write unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Here we, here we see that they are teaching that the things that they are writing unto you is for your benefit that ye sin not. The same thing with us, the things that we are talking about, the things that we are teaching is for your benefit that you will sin not. Now, if they're teaching about not sinning, in the New Testament, way after Christ has done died and, and done ascended. Now, this is dealing with sin, and we all know 1 John 3 and 4 what sin is. Sin is transgression of the law. Now, if they're dealing and trying to keep you from sinning against a law, that means that law is not done away with. That means that law is still profitable for you. So now let us see, because I want to prove to you, now I proved it in the New Testament, now let us go back to the Old Testament and prove to you and show you that this thing is still profitable and this thing is still going on from the old all the way to the new. Let's see, let's deal with Abraham, our father, one of our forefathers, Abraham for just a moment, Genesis 18 and verse 19. And you can read it, brother, whenever you get there. For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him. And they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. Now we see that Abraham was going to be blessed with something if he did something. Now, and the father said that he knew Abraham. And he said he knew that he would command his children and his household after him to do something. That they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment. Now let us go to Deuteronomy 6 and see what this way is. Let's see what he's talking about. Deuteronomy 6 and we're going to start with verse 7. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. And shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house. And when thou walkest by the way. And when thou liest down. And when that rises up. Now we see right here, he's telling us again that somebody should be teaching their children this way. He just said that Abraham was going to do it. Now we hear Moses is telling us to do it again. Now what is this thing that he's trying to get us to teach? Let us go back up to verse 1 and read verses 1 through 3 and let us see what this way is. Or what is this, this that we're supposed to be teaching our children? Now these are the commandments. These are the what? The commandments, the statutes, and the judgments, which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that ye might do, do them in the land whither ye go to possess it, that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God, to keep, all, to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee, thou and thy son, and thy son's son, all the days of thy life, that thy days may prolong, be prolonged. 
Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that, that ye may increase mightily, as the Lord God of thy fathers hath promised thee, in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Now we see here is Moses with, with telling us to do these things. Now Abraham taught them to his children, and he told us to teach our children. And then also, I like it where it says, it said that ye may do them in the land which tells us now there gonna come a time where we gonna go back to our own land and we gonna be keeping this thing and people are gonna get taught and you gonna either keep it or not keep it because there's only one or two things that you gonna do either you gonna head to the lake of fire or you gonna keep this thing like God said to do it so and then also it says this is how I know this thing is profitable for us this is how I know that it can benefit you it says in verse 2 that it says thy days may be prolonged father this is how we get to that 120 years that me and my dad was just talking about the other day on the phone your life your days can be prolonged and then not only that you not only just your regular life here right we are in this part of life, but after we be changed, the eternal life that we may be granted just for keeping these commandments. Now, and then also it says, observe to do. Now, first it said in verse 3, hear. First you need to hear these things. You need to put these things in your mind, and then after you hear them, observe and to do it. We just can't hear and not do it like the brother LD just had in his message. We got to be hearers and doers of this thing. Now let us go to verse 6 because I want to see how, how did Abraham know that he was supposed to teach his children this thing? How, where did it come from? Where was it at? What was these commandments placed at? Let us go down to verse 6. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. It said that it shall be in thine heart, meaning being in your mind. These things was placed in Abraham's mind. It was in him from the beginning. Now let us prove to you that it was in him. Let us go to 2 Timothy 2, 3. 2 Timothy 3 and verse 15. Because I want to show you that these things has been planted in your mind from the beginning. That's why I did my message last two Sabbaths ago about stirring up your mind and trying to bring these commandments back up in your mind. Let us go and read that, brother, uh, 2 Timothy 3 and 15. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, who are, who, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. It said from a child. These things have been placed in your mind since since. The birth from the, your early existence. These things have been in your mind. These are the things that will make you wise. These commandments, these things will make you wiser than anything. I went to Mississippi State University, which is one of the best, you know, college. I ain't, you know, I ain't got nothing against that school right down the road, but it ain't nothing to go there. But this right here, this, this right here is way better than what I got at Mississippi State. This has got me more blessings than anything. So now let us go to Zechariah 7 and 7. And let, let us, let's see what the people are doing today. Let us see what is going on in today's time. Because there's so many things that are going wrong in this time. Zechariah 7 and 7. Should ye not hear the words which the Lord had cried by the former prophets? He asked the question. He said, should ye not hear the words which the Lord had cried by the former prophets? My father, he just read a scripture on there earlier about going back to the old way. Going back to your first love. Should you not be listening and paying attention to what the prophets has always been teaching? You can go and read every last one of these prophets in the Bible and every last one of them are going to touch on the commandments. Now, if they all had to teach it and they all taught it, why are we trying to do away with something that is so profitable to us? Now, he asked the question, should ye not hear the words which the Lord had cried by the former prophets? Let's see what the people said. Let's skip down to verse 11 and read verse 11 through 12. But they refused to hearken and pulled away the shoulder and stopped their ears that they should not hear. But they refused. This is going on today, saints. Can, can we not see this thing? That people are just literally refusing to hear the commandments. Well, I don't want to hear that. That ain't nothing for me. Yes, it is. 
This is your whole lifestyle right here. Now let us read verse 12. Yea, they made their hearts as an adamant stone, lest they should hear the law, and the words which the Lord of hosts hath sent in, in his spirit by the former prophets. Therefore came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts. This is why certain things, well, this is why all the things that are going on in this world are happening now. Because simply people have walked away from the commandments of God. And now the wrath from the Lord of hosts has come. Now let us go to Malachi. Malachi and read. Chapter 2, verses 8 through 9. And let's see who else are we dealing with here. Because it's not just the people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But ye are departed out of the way. Ye have caused many to stumble at the, at the law. Ye have corrupted the covenant of Levi, said the Lord of hosts. So he says somebody have departed out of the way. The way that we were just talking about where Abraham taught his children. And then the way. The same way that Moses told us, told us to teach our children. Now I wonder who this is. Keep reading. Therefore have I also made you con contemptible and base, and base before all the people, according as ye have not kept my ways, but have been par partial in the law. Oh man, that sounds like a lot of people today being partial in the word, being partial in the law. Well, we don't have to keep this part, but we can keep this part. Mm -hmm. Well, this part has been done away with, so we don't have to do the Old Testament anymore, but we still need to keep the New Testament. Well, we don't have, then we even got some brothers, some brothers only keep Torah only and don't even believe in New, New Testament. This is not just other <laughs> religions. We have some Israelite brothers that are still lost as well. That don't even keep the full word. Now we have, now let us go back to verse 7 and see who this is that is departing out of the way and causing the people to err. Verse for, 7. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law at, at his mouth, for he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. So you telling me the priest is the ones that done departed out of the way and causing the causing many to stumble at the word of God to cause them to stumble at the law and the commandments he said these are supposed to be messengers of the Lord these are supposed to be the ones that are keeping the law now let us go skip over to chapter 3 and read verses 13 through 14 uh, 13 yes read 13 and 14 your words have been stout against me saith the Lord Yet ye say, what have we spoken so much against thee? Ye have said, it is, it is vain to serve God. And what profit is it that we have kept his ordinance? And that we, and that we have <laughs> walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts. Now they said, they asked the question, it is vain to serve God. And what profit is it that we have kept his ordinance? This way is still profitable, saints. All we got to do is just walk it. And it surprised me that people even just <laughs> come up against the Lord to even ask that question. I mean, now let us go to our last scripture, Zephaniah. Zephaniah 1, verses 1 through 18. Because the Father wants us to keep these commandments and sad to say, we got some people that, that, that won't even keep them, even if they, <laughs> they'll be taught, they'll be shown. It's almost like you can sit there and show them word for word. And it's almost like you're doing a math problem with the little kids these days. <laughs> little Johnny, what's two plus four? Uh, uh, five? No, it, it ain't four, five. And then you done simply told them, all right, the answer is four. So you just say four. The answer is four, but I, I'm going to also show you two plus two is four. Now, I done showed you two plus two is four. Now, you say it's four when I say two plus two. Little Johnny, what's two plus two? Uh, Eleven. And it seems like sometimes when we're teaching this, we can't get through to the people because their mind and their hearts have been hardened and their mind have been so blinded to the point that they can't comprehend 
what we're teaching. And it's so sad, saints, when I see the things that are going on in the world. And now let us read. This is my last scripture. And I will bring distress upon men, that they shall walk like blind men, because they have sinned against the Lord. And their blood shall be poured out as dust, and their flesh as the, as the dawn. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. But the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy. For he shall make even a speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land. All this is going to go on simply because of the fact that people will not keep God's law. Saints, God's word and God's law is still profitable. Let's just simply keep it and do what thus said the Lord because Revelation tells us that we can make it into the kingdom by simply keeping God's law. Come on, give God a shout of hallelujah, saints. Hallelujah. Again, what we have, saints, we want to try to help, especially during this month. We're going to try to come and teach as often as we can, as much as we can. That My brother Wayne told me, and our elder brother, he's getting ready to come. He said, if you're going to change it, try to help change the people, he said, you're probably going to have to teach it the whole year long. As bad as things have gotten. And it's just, we're at that point, saints. And again, you know, whatever we do, we do it out of love because we, have, we love our brothers and sisters. Do you know how many nights sometimes I wake up and, 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 and have to pray and, and just do things, can't sleep? Because the thing that's going on in the world, you know, when, when my sister, my brother and sister told me that what happened to those two young girls that were shot, that stuff sands my heart. Come on, give God a shout of hallelujah. Uh, Ella brother is coming, Ella Tucker. He's coming, and then we're getting ready to come back and just share. We thank God for our brother as arrived with us on the night. Uh, and you're going to hear from him next week. But come on, give God a shout. Hallelujah for our brother as he come. You know, this in here, you're going to hold it. Shalom, each and every one. We thank, do thank God again for his word. Uh, brother Mark Quitt and their brother LD have blessed us with the word. And I'm going to give a little more of the word. And I want to talk about, <clears throat> I want to talk about uh, get in a covenant with the Father. Get in covenant with the Father. And when I think about getting in covenant, the first thing part when I think about covenant, I think about some around me, some protecting me, something keeping me. So get in a covenant with the Lord. And we're going to start this in uh, Genesis 6. Six and uh, verse 1. And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair. Okay. Skip. I'm sorry. Skip on now. Start back over at uh, one. Just read one only. Okay. And then I want you to go down to five. And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them. Verse five. Mm -hmm. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And that every Im imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Yeah, that's where they have got now. The men have got evil, they have got wickedness continually. Read on uh, verse 7, 6 and 7. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air. For it repented, repented of me that I have made them. Okay, it repented God that he even made man. But we're going to go on, and we know the story. Uh, but Noah, he found, go to verse 17, but Noah, he found grace with the Father. Read 17. And behold, I... Even I do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. 
Okay, read verse 18. But with thee will I establish but my covenant. But with co thee, say it again. But with thee will with I. Go ahead. But with thee will I establish my covenant. With thee I will establish my covenant. God, friend, here he is, friend, establish, establish a covenant with Noah. Read on. Read 18 only. And thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons and thy wife and thy sons' wives with thee. Okay, now let's go over to Genesis 9 and verse 9. And I, behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you. God said he's going to establish a covenant with you and your seed after you. That's what he told Noah. Okay, go on with 11, verse 11. And I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of, of a flood. Neither shall, there any, neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. Okay, go down to 13. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. God said he set a bow in the sky. This is going to be a covenant yes, for you. And when he see this covenant, when he see this covenant, he's going to remember the covenant that he made with you. And I got some things, that, uh, that, um, some prayers, and I got some stuff written out. And sometimes when I go back, it just when I look back, what have I written, some of the things, some of the things God don't forget, but some of the things I forget, I forget. But when I look back, and what I have written, it reminds me I have a covenant, some things I, I, I got to do that what I said I was going to do for the Father. Okay, read, you read 13? Mm -hmm. Okay, read 16. And the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it, that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. He going to remember when he see the bow in the sky. He going to remember his covenant that he made between you and him. And I, I, as I say it, the covenant, to me, when you're in covenant, you wrapped up, you shield it, that you protect it, that you not only shield it and protect it from hurt, harm, and danger, but you wrapped up and seal the things that you can't even do that everybody else do. Sin, you can't do things you can't do because you're in this covenant with the Father, and he promised you some things because you're in the covenant. You, okay. Go on with Genesis 17, verse 1. Talking about Brother Abr Abram. Genesis 17 and 1. And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Walk up before me and be thy perfect. Okay, read, read uh, verse 7. If you walk up before me and be perfect, I'm going I'm to establish something with you. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed not after only, thee. Not only between you and me, but this going to go on for your seed, for your children, your children, children, on through the generation for you, Abraham, if you keep my covenant. Okay, stop back at seven and read up. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and okay. to thy seed after thee. Until the seed after thee. And when you wrap, when you all wrapped up, if you stay in this covenant, God is going to bless you. All you got to, you need to be in this cover. You need to be covered. You need to be in this contract and you need to be in an oak. You need to be in a promise with the father. Go back and read six. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. Kings and nations going to come from us if we stay wrapped up in this covenant. Okay. Now go to Exodus 19. Exodus 19. And start it reading that verse. Let me get to 19 and 5. Now, therefore, if you will keep, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. For all the earth is mine. For all the earth is mine. We're going to be a patria, patria, treasure up above all the peoples of the earth. Okay, read number 6. 
and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Yes. Okay, go back and catch. What is that? Okay, let's look at it. Okay, Exodus 31. Get in this covenant with the Father. Get in a covenant with the Father. So we can get the promises, we can get the protection, we can get in this contract, as I call it. 31 in uh, verse, starting at verse 16. Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath, to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations. Okay. For he said, uh, verse 16, he said, Wherefore the children of Israel should keep the Sabbath and observe the Sabbath throughout their generation. And what, what is this for? For a perpetual covenant. Okay, read on 17. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel yeah. forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. We got to remember, when, when the father said, he said, remember the Sabbath day, to keep it holy. As Brother Mark said, at, like we, he knew that we were going to look over it, that we were going to forget it, and we didn't think maybe that it was just in that, that important. He says, remember it. Yes. This, is a, this right here, he said, is a sign between me and the children of Israel, and not, and not just for then, for this is forever. Get in this covenant. Okay, Jeremiah 31. Jeremiah 31 and verse 31. Behold, the days come, said the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and He's with make the house a of Judah. new covenant with the house of Israel right. and with the house of Judah. Keep, keep reading. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my, which my covenant they break, although I was an, an husband unto them, said, said the Lord. He said, which the covenant they did break, and I was a husband to them, and we know how a husband take care of their wife. The father of the God said he was a husband to them. That means they break his covenant. Keep reading, but verse 33. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the, with the house of Israel. After those days, said the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. God said he's going to put his law into your heart, in your inner parts, into your heart. And, and, and not only that, and God said they shall be my people. You're going to be his people no longer that you can say I don't know because he has put it here. When you go to do wrong, it's going to already be here. It's going to automatically click. I shouldn't do that. I shouldn't do that. He's going to put his law into our heart, into our inner parts. Okay, now we will go to uh, Psalms 40. Psalm 40. Verse 8. Start at verse 8. I delight to do thy will, O my God. David said, I delight to do thy will, O God. Okay, keep reading. Thy law is within my heart. Your law is in, in my heart. That's what he said he's going to put. The Lord said he's going to put his law in your heart, in your mind, in your inner parts. Okay, keep, keep reading. I have preached righteousness in the great congregation. Lo, I have not refrained my lips. O Lord, thou knowest. Keep reading. I have not hid thy, thy righteousness within my heart. I have declared thy faithfulness and thy salvation. I have not concealed thy loving kindness and thy truth from the great congregation. Withhold not thou thy ten, tender mercies from withhold, me. Withhold not thy tender mercy from me, O Lord. But let, go ahead. Let thy loving kindness and thy truth continually preserve let it, me. Let it continue to preserve me. Okay, we're going to uh, Romans uh, 9, our brother, 
Marquette went there. So we're not going to read the part that he read. Started just started one. Romans 9, Romans 9 and 1. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience always bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. Keep going. Mm -hmm. That I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh. And who is this to? Who are, who are they? Who are Israelites. They are Israelites. Yes. Go ahead. Whom, who pertain? To whom pertain of the adoption? They have the adoption. The glory. The glory. The covenant. The covenant. The giving of the law. The giving of the law. And the service of and God. And the service of God. And the promises. And the promises. We have God have gave us all these all these things, the adoption, the glory, the covenant, the giving of the law, the service of God, and all the promises. Get into this covenant of the Father so we can, she can get the blessings, we can, the, 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 all these even things that we see go on and all over the world. All these things will be stopped, Brother Marquette said, if we get back into the commandments. If we get into commandments, okay, now we will go to... First Kings, First King, verse eight. First King, uh, chapter eight. First hmm. King, chapter eight, and verse twenty-three. And he said, "Lord God of Israel." There is no God like thee in heaven above or on earth beneath who keep his covenant and mercy with thy servants it, that walk. Sodom said ain't no other God. Ain't no other God to keep his covenant and mercy with the servants that walk before thee with all their heart. Go ahead with our 25. Therefore now, Lord God of Israel, keep with thy servant David my father that thou promised him, saying, There shall not fail thee a man in my sight to sit on, on the throne of Israel. So that thy children take heed to their way, mm -hmm. that they walk before me as thou, thou hast walkest before me. And now, O God of Israel, let thy word, I pray thee, be, ver be verified, which thou spakest unto thy servant David, my father. Get in this covenant with the father. He said, if you get in my covenant, you keep my co covenant, get in my covenant and do my commandments. He promised that he would take sickness away from us. And he won't put in here, take all these evil diseases. He won't let them come up on us, but he'll put them up on the ones that hate us. Okay, now we will go to uh, 1 John. This is where Mark went. 1 John, verse 2. 1 John, chapter 2. Start at verse 1. My little children. These things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Yes, skip down to uh, verse 3. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. That's how we know if we keep his commandments. Read the next verse. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word... In him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. Okay, verse 7. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you. Brother, I write no new commandment unto you. But an old commandment. But an old commandment. Which ye had from the beginning. You have had this from the beginning. Is that read, finish reading that. The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write, unto, I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past and the true light now shineth. Okay, good. now we're going to go to Deuteronomy. This will be our last scripture. Verse chapter 13. Deuteronomy 13 and... Uh, Four. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God, and fear him, and keep his commandments, and obey his voice, 
and ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. Okay, now go over to, back a step to 12, chapter 12 and 28. Observe and hear Observe all, and hear all All these words which I command thee That it may go well with thee And with thy not children after you, thee Not only you but who is going to be well for With thy children after thee Forever when thou doest that which is good And right in the sight of the Lord thy God We thank God for his word And we hope and well, We know it was something to help you along the way Hallelujah Hallelujah Hallelujah. Come on, give God a shout of hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, again, it's our job. Come on, come on, brother. Grab you some, uh, come on up and grab you uh, some things. Every one of you get a mic. Uh, put your chair in and come tight as you can. Uh, we're going to talk. Listen, and to, all, to our viewers on tonight, we have about another 20 minutes or so. If there are any questions about anything that these brothers have talked about on tonight, we welcome your questions on tonight. Uh, we made a statement on Sabbath day that if what we're teaching, give me a high stool, Wayne, is not good enough for you to question us, we shouldn't be saying that. We shouldn't say it. And I know the things that we're going to just talk here just a moment, they read from the beginning of the covenant, and they took it all the way into the New Testament. A lot of people now that don't so much as, I won't say believe in, but they don't think we have to keep the part of the old covenant. So what we're going to do at this point, and these guys, they didn't know anything that I was going to give them. So what we're going to do uh, at this point, we're going to talk. I'm gonna, I got some scriptures in it, and I'm going to just let, we're going to go over it. They don't know what they are. And I'm going to let them explain the things that I have, and then I'll talk on now, um, and we're just giving them a chance. You know, we're going to start with Matthew chapter. Brothers, you don't have it on your paper, but Matthew chapter 5. We're going to start with that one. Matthew chapter 5. And I'm going to rest myself. Not because I need to. But, but uh, Matthew chapter 5. And go ahead. Whoever, whichever one, whichever one of you all want to read that, and we're gonna start with verse seventeen, Matthew chapter five and seventeen. Whoever, think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Read it again. Think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy the law, but to fulfill. Now I'm gonna let him talk on what he just said. There. Now this is Christ. You you talk on that, brother. And it's just simply saying, Jesus didn't come to, to, to do away with the law. He didn't come to nail it to the cross when, when he died on the cross. He came to fulfill it. And uh, basically, which is just uh, basically set it, it's supposed to still been in motion, but set it back in motion to where this is what you're supposed to uh, um, um, do. And that's when the, the young man asked him, what, what can I do to receive eternal life? And he simply told him to keep my commandments. Simple as that. Now, he did mention that he came to fulfill a law. What law is that that he came to fulfill? And that's what we want to show you from the New Testament. We're not going to go into the Old Testament except to establish one point. But what law is it that he came to fulfill? Read on, read verse 18. We're going through 18 and 19. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. All right. Any of y'all brothers have anything you'd like to say about those two verses? Listen, the Bible said not one jot or tiller of God's Ten Commandments will pass. If it do heaven and earth, it's all going to be done with. Now, the last part of that thing that you read in verse number 19, if you don't teach the commandments of God, you're going to be called least in the kingdom. What's least in the kingdom? Least in the kingdom is outside of God's kingdom. What's outside of God's kingdom, brother? 
the lake of fire. But whoever do teach men to do this. Now this is New Testament here. We're going to get to get something. Eternal life there. Let's look at what, what uh, sin simply is. Whichever one of your brothers want to read it. First John chapter 3 and verse number 4. And listen, we welcome your questions on tonight. If there be any. Just anything about what we're talking about. And when we finish this, we'll take any questions about anything that you desire to ask us. But who, come on, brother. 1 John 2. 1 John 3. 3, three and 4. And 3 and verse 4. Verse 4. Whosoever commits sins to transgress uh, also the law. For sin is a transgression of the law. Come on, which one do you want to talk about there? Whosoever commit, whoever commits sins, they have transgressed the law, which is the law of the commandments. What they was talking about, <laughs> sin is a transgression of the law. Simply so that, say. We got to, we got to keep, got to keep the command, the law, the commandments. And uh, brother LD just read in John two, First John two. And I think that was verse 7, no new commandment. This is not nothing new. You've been headed from the beginning, hmm. Christ said. Okay. Sin is the breaking of God's law. You want to know if you commit sin? Is smoking a sin? No. Going to the casino a sin? No. Is drinking a sin? No. Is dancing a sin? No. We've been taught that wearing lipstick a sin? No. Wearing your clothes a little tight. Is that a sin? No. Might not be the best advertisement for the men in the church, but it's not sin. <laughs> Would you all agree with me, brother? I'm going to put it talking to you, Mike. Would you agree with me? Hallelujah. Probably, there you go. The older brother, the other brother said hallelujah. They're back there saying it. <laughs> sin is when you break God's law. Let's see what the reward is for breaking God's law. Come on, Romans chapter. Romans 6 and 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. <laughs> you don't want to say anything about it? Uh, what's, what's the payment of sin? Death. Yes. Wayne, Wayne says sin is the breaking of God's Ten Commandments. And then if you want to get paid for breaking them, what is it, Mark Wayne? <laughs> Death. The wages of sin is death. <laughs> Listen, I don't want that. I'm not going to put nothing. I'm not going to work for that one. I'm not working for it. In this same chapter, we're going to bag up. Brother going to read a favorite scripture that most people, when they uh, find a script, scripture for me and Peter, uh, God's word is hard to understand by people that what's called find it cedric show me what the scripture is. yeah Paul's writing is hard yeah uh-huh come on romans 6 and 14 for sin shall not have dominion over you for ye are not under the law but under grace do it again for ye are not under the law but under grace what then shall we sin go, because we are go not back, go back to verse 14 again for sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. How many people have been teaching and telling the people we keep the commandments and this scripture have been read to you? People tell you this. We're not under the law, but we are under grace. And this is what we come over here to talk about on tonight. Now, Christ just told you, if he was going to put you under something where you didn't keep the law, he wouldn't have told you that in, in Mark chapter, Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. He didn't come to destroy the law, but to fulfill it. And I want to see what law he fulfilled. The same law that he fulfilled, saints, this is the one that he's talking about right here. Read it again, Mark Way. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. The question is to be asked, what law, Paul, are you talking about that we are not under? 
Now we're going to let the word of God speak for its, itself on tonight. But the only thing that hurt people is, and Peter said it plainly. Did you find it? Get it together, brother. I do like what's going. Don't embarrass me up here. We got y'all live, and y'all supposed to know what the scripture. Is. Y'all, y'all tighten in a little bit. Come in a little bit closer there. Now listen here. Paul's writing. Look what Peter says about him. Read it, brother. Second Peter three and sixteen. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of 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 these things. In Go back which, to verse 15. And we want to see who, whose epistles we're talking about. Verse 15. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul also. Who? who? Our beloved brother who? Paul. So let's see what Peter said about our beloved brother Paul. Verse 16. As also in all his epistles, speaking uh, do, in Go back and do it again. Also in how many of Paul's books? In all his epistles. In every one of Paul's books that he wrote. Speaking. If you want to, if you want to start it with Romans, First Corinthians, Second Corinthians, and uh, uh, take it all the way to he, I mean to uh, Hebrews and uh, whatever, wherever you want to stop him at. But out of all of them, what is it about all of Paul's writing, Brother Jackson? Speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood. Why is Paul's writings under, hard to understood? Paul would make you seem like which they he's going against. Christ. Christ said he didn't come to destroy the law, but Paul just told the people that they were not under the law, but under grace. So what are the people doing, Brother Jackson? Which they that are unlear unlearned and unstable rest. When they're the people that are what now? Unlearned and unstable rest. Now, now this boy here, I don't know what he's talking about, Mississippi State for I, I don't know. I, I didn't get to go to the school, but the one I went to was better than that. Now, listen. People that have not been taught God's words, they're twisted and try to make it say whatever they want to say. The word of God never contradicts itself. What these guys, all of them talked about the covenant. Christ came and said, I didn't come to destroy, but to fulfill. If you want eternal life, keep it. Paul's writing is hard to understand for people that hadn't been taught the truth. Wayne friend said if you hadn't been taught by a true brother, that's the reason why people don't understand. I don't know who the true brother here, but somebody's missing something. Finish your text, brother. Yes. Which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. The unlearned and unstable people, they twist the scriptures just like they do all of the rest of them. Get your echo, Mark Webb. So let's go back over here where we were at in Romans chapter 10 this time. We read that we're not under, gray, under, under that, uh, the law, but under grace. And the other verse said, just because you're not under, shall you continue in sin? That the grace of God may abide? God forbid. So let's read that, Romans chapter 10. So we should ask the question, what law is he talking about? So let's look at this, brother. Romans chapter 10 and verse number 1. Brother, my heart desire prayer to God for Israel is that that they might be saved. Hold right there for just one minute. You talked all about, you took it from, you brought it from, from Abraham in Genesis. And brought us all the way. You, you, you talked about the new covenant and the covenant of the bow and all of these things. And then you went into Romans chapter 9. You said God gave them the law, the covenant, the services, the article. God gave us all of these things. And now Paul is saying about the, and I want to just say this the way I want to say it, excuse me. He's talking about the black people. That's in church more than anybody else can sing better than anybody else, can preach and hoop and, and do all of these things better than any other people. But Paul make it seem like you got something wrong. Read the first verse again. Brethren, my heart desire prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Paul said, some of you all think you're going to make it just because you're in church, but you won't. My heart desire and prayer for Israel that they might. What's wrong with them, brother? 
For I bear them record that they have not have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Now, he's talking in the church here. Do you think the people have knowledge in the, in the churches today? Do you knowledge. think, come on brother. No knowledge. Well, turn back there to Jose for me. Chapter 4. And read that. When the people don't have no knowledge. Come back there for me. Read your two verses again, Wayne. Brother, my hard desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear, the, bear, record, bear record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to, to knowledge. Four and six. <laughs> Now, we're going to do verse 1. They said they don't have no knowledge. Look what God said about the people that don't have no knowledge. Read it. He, uh, uh, Hosea chapter 4 verse 1. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. For the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. Because there is no truth, no truth, nor mercy, no mercy. nor knowledge of God Amen. in the land. Listen. He's talking in the church. Now, read what Paul said again in verse 2, Wayne. For, for I, I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. And when you don't have no knowledge, come on, Jose, preach for me in chapter 6, verse 6. My, Jose chapter 4, verse 6, when you don't have no knowledge, look at it. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Why the people destroyed? Because of lack of knowledge. It ain't because Mr. Amazon and Nike ain't paying you 20, 20, 30 dollars an hour right now. You got money. Some of you doing better than you ever did before, amen? Amen. But our people are destroyed. Do it, son. For lack of knowledge. Read on. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Hold right there for one minute. <laughs> I don't want to lose nothing. But one thing I definitely don't want to do, Sister Jimson, is bring the name of Christ to an open shame. He reject me. Can, listen here. Do you remember how Saul, the first king that was anointed in that place, and God rejected him? That man couldn't take it. It ran him crazy. You know what he ended up with? Death. It's bad to be rejected by God from preaching. God, why did you do that to the people? Finish it, son. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law. What did they do? Forgotten the law. Everything that these boys preached about tonight. Seeing that they forgot the law. Of thy God, I will also forget thy children. You remember? You, you remember? That's sad. Saint. I ain't going to even have it to read it over. I told you if you do right, you can start helping to save your children. Brother said, I bear them record. They have a zeal for God, but it's not according to knowledge. So go back and read verse 1 again, because he's talking about saving your children. Read it, Brother Wayne. Brother, my heart is our prayer unto God, is God for Israel, that ye might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. I'm going to go ahead and read 3. For they being ignorant... Of God's righteousness, going about to establish their own righteousness, having not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. What was wrong they, with God? They, what was wrong? Go ahead. You finish that, sir. They have they have been ignorant unto God righteousness. They have forgot His word. Uh, some say we don't even have to keep His word. We don't have to keep His commandments. We don't have to do all those things that they used to do in the Old Testament. We have. They, 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 the, the, the word said, for they have been ignorant of God's righteousness. Being ignorant. Going to establish their own, how they think it should be, and what sound good to the ear. How many have been in churches and they told you that drinking was a sin? I'm not saying it's the best thing for you. But listen, I saw you doing it in your private time, and then when you get up and you do what you tell somebody else don't do it. I saw you dying now. Off of Highway 61 too. But you tell other folk don't do it. It's a sin. Come on now. 
I, I used to like to listen to blues. I still do. I just don't listen to it. But they had old blues songs that was good for the goose. Thank you, lady. You listened to that song too, evidently. <laughs> Let's read verse 4, Brother White. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness unto everyone that believes. Now, the question is, what law is Christ the end of? What law was it in Matthew chapter 5 where Christ said, I, I came not to destroy but to fulfill? What law is it that he fulfilled and what law is it that he's the end of? What we at, what we at on the scripture? Verse 4. Let's go on over here and take a look at this law before. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I wanted to read a scripture to go in with that, um, that verse 3. And it's Mark 7 and 9. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God that ye may keep your own tradition. <laughs> All too well. Church people. You have rejected. Now, see, the last part, them guys stay. They walk you from the covenant. Wayne started you with Genesis. The brothers uh, uh, started you there. They walked from Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy. Listen, they stayed in the Old Testament. But this time we're standing in the New Testament and showing you the exact same law. Now, if we go on in this, in, the, in this month, we're going to continue to talk about it. You can't find me a book in the Bible and talk about anything. Brother Wayne told me today, if you want prosperity, all about the law. Well, I don't believe it. Come back to that idea right quick before we go over and do it. Come back to that idea. I think it's chapter 56. And then somebody get Joshua. If you want prosperity, listen, you ain't got to stand and give and give. If you want prosperity, if you want money, just keep the thing. Who it? Are there, uh, what did I say? 56? Let's see if we can find it here. Are there chapter 56? Go ahead and do me Deuteronomy chapter 8 and 18 and see if we're talking about it there with the covenant that these guys are talking about. And then find me Joshua chapter. 1 verse 8, I think. In this book of the law, a 7 and 8, find it for me. Let me get this one that I'm talking about here. All right, chapter 59. Uh, where it might not be. Huh? Yeah, do whichever one you want to do. Uh, Deuteronomy 7 and 18. No, 8 and 18. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant with which he swore unto thy fathers as it is this day. How long did that last, brother? As it is this day. This day, if you want, I did 48. If you want to be blessed, God is in covenant with you if you keep the commandment. Come on, give me Joshua's scripture. This, Joshua 1 and 8. This book, uh, okay, I'm starting at 7. Only be thou strong. And very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded. Do according to all what now? All the law. All of the law. Every bit of what you get to get if you get all of the law. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law. You get to prosper wherever you go if you don't turn away from the law. This book of the law. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written now, therein. And what, 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 what going to happen then? If I read the law day and night, what going to happen to me? For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, Wayne. Isaiah chapter 48 and verse number 17. Thus says the Lord, thy, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord thy God, which teach thee to profit. They teach him how to do what now? <laughs> to profit. If you want to profit in life, I'm there to teach you something. I know you didn't think I was in there. Go on, teach him out there. 
which leadeth thee by the way that thou shalt go. Oh, that thou hast hearkened unto my commandments. If we, if we did what now? If we had hearkened to the com only my commandments. If, only if you would have listened to God. Do it again, sir. Oh, that thou had hearkened unto my commandments. Then thy peace, then thy peace been as a river, as thy righteousness, as the waves of the sea. If you want to prosper in life, listen to the commandments, Isaiah. You preach this thing, man. <laughs> Now listen, what about my children? What about my children? Why, what about my children? Verse, verse. Thy seed also has been as the sand, and the offsprings of thy bow mm -hmm. like the grave thereof. Mark, I mean, Keisha, you all, I bring you all to church because I want you all to prosper. I ain't just trying to keep you here a long time and all these days and all this stuff. I love doing what I'm doing. But I want prosperity in your life. And I can go on and on with this with the law. So let's go back over here to Colossians and see what we're fulfilled. What do you got? Ephesians. Ephesians. Yeah. Well, I got uh, Deuteronomy 4. Because we were talking about um, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness. And for us to get to that point when he told us in Deuteronomy 4 and 6, keep therefore and do them. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of, of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. But to the point now, <laughs> we, we are the ones so-called to be ignorant like, of God's righteousness. Oh, like, don't don't say, say people are that black like me, not we. <laughs> well, let me be like uh, what Paul said, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, even though I'm a little lighter than everybody, but what, people hey, what, that are my what are, you, what are you doing? <laughs> We what is wrong with you? We went over last week, you know, the speckle bird, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the speckle bird finna get put out tonight. But not. Nah, yeah, uh, they're trying to. And now, what are you doing? Go ahead on. But seriously, though, it's, um, it's, 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 it's really crazy how we've get, gotten to the point where we were supposed to be uh, above and not beneath, you know, in all these things. And people supposed to look unto us. But now we are the one, or the black people are the ones that's ignorant to God's righteousness. And, and it's, it's sad to say that. It really is. We didn't even take you, if you want to prosper in life, in the Deuteronomy chapter 28. Those things here, not to tell, lender not to borrow, bub not beneath, every, all of that is predicated upon you keeping God's commandments. Anyway, any, this is what Wayne told me to go today. Anywhere you go in the word of God, Old and New Testament, Everything revolves around you keeping God's law. So let's go over here and see what in Matthew chapter 5 he said he's going to fulfill some things, not destroy it. And in and, and, and Romans 10, he said there was a law that will fulfill. In Romans chapter 6, you're not under the law. Let's find out what law is it that we're not under no more, that the one that he did fulfill. Let's look at this. In, in, uh, come on, brother, who's going to read it? Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians 2 and 8. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Turn your oven on, daughter. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh. Now listen, listen. In time past... You, walk, you act just like the other people did. I'm talking about how they act in the flesh. How the Gentiles act in the flesh. Mm -hmm. You act just like them. Read on. Who are called uncircumcision. What were they called? Uncircumcision. Now, let me give you a new term for that today. They ain't saved. Well, let me do it right. They're not saved. Come on. <laughs> by that which is called the circumcision. In the flesh made by hands. Mm -hmm. That at the time ye were without Christ... Being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. From what now? The commonwealth of Israel. Who had the wealth, Marquette? <laughs> the Come commonwealth on, who of Israel. It? Israel had it. They gave it up. They gave it up when they gave up the law, though. Yes, and this sir. is why we're trying to regain this thing. Yes, sir. We ain't told us about all of the credentials that God gave you in Romans chapter 9. We're trying to regain. Ain't it well that he gave it in Deuteronomy 18, Joshua chapter 1, Isaiah, and all these other places. Y'all want to come up here and preach with me? Come on up here behind me. 
You can bring your thing. Come on. Bring your things on. Sit behind me up here. Come on out there. Y'all sit back here in the, in, in, the, in the grown men chair. There you go. Look at it. The prophet Jeremiah. Come on over here behind me. Behind that thing. Go in the chair. Raise your hand up and tell God hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on out there. Where you at? Come on right here. Come on, raise your hand up and tell God hallelujah. <laughs> All right. Now. You was at that. Verse number 13. Come on, son. Come on. Somebody give it to me. What y'all doing? <laughs> that at time. 13. 13. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made near by the blood of Christ. How did they get near? By the blood. Listen, that blood was under the covenant and passed with the Passover in Exodus chapter 12. Come on now. Now this is what we're getting here right here, what he fulfilled and paid it all with. Verse number for, 14. For he is our peace who had made both one and had broken down the middle wall of partition now, between what, us. What did Christ do? He broken down the middle wall. <laughs> when the veil was split in the temple, he tore down the middle wall of partition. What did he do, Marquette? Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances. Contained in what now? Ordinances. It's very key that you get this. The law that had to do with ordinance. This is the law that he fulfilled. I'm going to name it for you in a few minutes. Read it. For to make in himself of twain one new man, so make in peace. Come on, read it. That all of it? Yes, sir. Colossians 2 and 8. Let's look at this thing in Colossians 2 and 3. He abolished in his flesh. In other words, this is what he nailed to the cross, saints. This one was against us. This one here, it couldn't, it couldn't, it couldn't give us salvation. It couldn't give us eternal life. What LD talked about that 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 that, that man wanted. Let's look at it over here in Colossians chapter 2. And come on, brother. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 13. And you being dead in your sins and the un uncircumcision of the flesh. Go back to verse 8. There, I got, I, I'm looking at a different paper than what they got. Read verse 8. Back up the verse. Be, beware, lest any man spoils you through hip, hip, philosophy. philosophy in the a, in a vain deceiving after the tradition of men. After who? After the tra tradition of men. Uh, listen, in other words, don't let nobody cheat you, Zaina. And have you walking after the tradition of men. What are they? Why ain't read on? After the, how do you pronounce that? Rubbing, mm -hmm. Rubening. Of the world and not after Christ. Don't, don't listen. You better follow Christ. Don't follow what it said. Now come on down to verse number 13 where we were dead and we'll see what we can find in here. Verse 13. And you being dead in your sins and, uncircum and uncircumcised <laughs> of your flesh, has he quickened together with him, having forgiven you of all trespasses. He did that through his blood. Let's look at it. This is the thing right here. Read it. Verse 14 said. Blotting out. And handwriting, blotting out and handwriting of the ordinance that was against us, which the contrary to us. Listen, whatever ordinance that was against us and contrary to us, Christ blotted it out with his blood. Mm -hmm. He did away with it. He paid it all. He nailed it on the cross. He hung it on the tree. I got to find out what this one is. Finish that verse. And took it out of the way, netting it to the cross. Well, he did what now? Nailing it to the this cross. This is what he nailed on the cross. The ordinance of the law. I want to see what that is. Is that all of it? Mm -hmm. Let's go back here and see what this ordinance is, saints. Numbers, we go right to it. This is the time that we're coming into the Old Testament. And I think we have just two scriptures or one scripture, two scriptures. And then with one scripture after this one. And we're going to get ready to give you up. Numbers chapter 19. Let's see what this ordinance is. Saints, this is, let me just tell you. This is the law of animal sacrifice that he fulfilled. We, didn't have to, we don't have to kill no more animals. Their blood is not good enough. Hebrews chapter 9 says, If the blood of bulls and lamb sanctified the unclean, it kept them for a little while at that time. How much more would the blood of Christ? That's what he just read in Colossians. That's what he just read in things. This is the law that we did away with. Listen, if you want your children saved, 
teach them the commandments. If you want the stuff to stop with what happened to Brother Tyree, teach the commandments. If those five police officers would have knew, if they, if, in their church, if they was teaching the commandments, Sister Jimson, there's no way they could have did that to that young man. No way. Love would have fulfilled it in their mind. The, the, the Holy Spirit would have bought back some things in their mind. They couldn't do it. They couldn't have did it, Chloe. But because they weren't under God's law, they feel they can do anything. Let's read that, Brother Jackson. Numbers 19, starting at verse 1. First, first John, second John. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, this is the ordinance of the law. This is what now? This is the ordinance of Whatever the law. Whatever this ordinance is, this is the same thing that Wayne read in Colossians, and he read in Ephesians. What did, do it? Do it. Which the Lord has commanded, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel that they bring thee a red heifer Wait, without what kind spot. Of, what kind of heifer? A red heifer. Now, on the news just last year, a few months ago, they getting a whole lot of red heifers, and they taking them back to Israel. In pre preparation for something. I wonder what they do with them red heifers. And it's just a cow. I wonder what they're going to do with it. Listen. This is what they did. They took them. Took the blood. And did what they did to try. To cover those people's sins. Had to be blood. That's all it is. This was the law of animal sacrifice. That Christ fulfilled. If you got him trying to fulfill the commandments. You fulfill the commandment. Don't let Christ fulfill the man. You fulfill them. Don't let him pay it all for you. You fulfill them. How do I fulfill the commandment? Just by keeping them. Simply that. They're not hard. They're not grievous. Read verse whatever I had on there. Four, what I had. Verse four. And Eleazar the priest shall take of her blood with his finger and <laughs> sprinkle of her blood directly before the tabernacle of that, the congregation. I told you, he got took of the blood. The ordinance of the law was the law of animal sacrifice dealt with the killing of animals. Simple as that. Don't let nobody cheat you. Come on, Wayne. First John, and we're getting ready to go unless these guys have something. I, uh, 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 first, second John, second John, second John. Second John. Second John 1, verse 1. And it. The elders unto the elect lady and her children, whom I love in the truth, and not only, and not I only, but also all they that have known the truth. Now, we come to close with this one. Listen, our brothers and sisters, John was talking about the elect lady, but our brothers and sisters, in so many other words, listen, we love you. And we love all that keep God's truth and his commandments. Verse number two. Let me show you why, Wayne, so much. Verse number two says. For the truth's sake which dwell in us. Why is the truth that? In us. And shall be with us forever. Now. <laughs> how long are you going to be with us? It's forever. With us forever. How long were the commandments that, you, that they gave you? How long were the commandments forever. supposed to lay? Forever. See, the whole word of God goes together. And if you find yourself doing away with some part of it, <laughs> you don't get to buy a buy for how long, Wayne? Forever. You won't get that one. Come on down to verse number four. I rejoice great. I rejoice greatly that I found find of thy children walking in the truth. As we have received a commandment, as we have received a commandment from the Father. What do we receive from the Father? The commandments from the Father. And how do we know that the children are walking in what way? In the truth. Because they walking and keeping the commandment. Amen. If this ain't good news, if this ain't a good way to close this, Sister Jimson, in the New Testament, put it up in the refrigerator. Tell them boys to bring me a bottle of water. I can go on all night long with it. I don't have to work tomorrow if I don't want to. I can do this all night long if you would stay with me, brother. If you want your children did right, put them in there. You have any, brother, have anything to say? Huh? Yeah, I'm going to do it all. Verse number four. Uh, I read, it's yeah, five. Five. 
And now I beseech thee, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment unto thee, but that which we have had, but that we have had from the beginning. Well, you, you, didn't, you didn't write no what way? No new commandment. Well, what did you give us then? From the commandment from which we have had from the beginning. You remember how he started that in Genesis chapter 18 or 17, way, way back there? You remember when Cain killed Abel? He knew the commandment was, thou should not kill. The commandment have been here from the beginning. We're not giving you nothing new. Read on, brother. That we love one another. And this, and this is the love that we walk after his commandment. This is the commandment that ye shall have heard from the beginning. <laughs> you shall walk in it. When should we should have heard about the commandment, Wayne? From the beginning. From the beginning. And what should we have done with the commandment? We should have walked in them. If we did, we wouldn't have. Cain wouldn't have killed Abel, and those, that guy wouldn't have killed Tyree Nichols if they were walking in it. Verse you, 7. You be careful now. Read it. Verse 7. Many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver. And then and, and Antichrist. Mm -hmm. That hold right there for a minute. Other people are going to preach and teach you everything. Read the first three words. What are they? Verse 7. Mm -hmm. For many, for many deceivers That's are what entered they into are. the world. That's what he at. I wonder what, when they come into the world, I wonder did they go down on Bill Street? No, they did not. It doesn't matter what the people down there. They came right on into the, coming to the church. Come on, finish. Verse 8. Verse 8. Look to yourself that we lose not uh, those things which we have wrought, but that oh. we receive. Listen, I pray to God that the thing that we've showed you tonight, the word of God is not going to come back void. It's going to accomplish just like God said, everything that he sent it for. And we pray that you receive it. Come on now. Read it. Verse 9. Whoso, whosoever transgress and abide not in the doctrine of Christ have not God. He that abide in the doctrine of Christ, he have both the Father and the Son. Read the first two words again. Whosoever transgress. Now, what did you all say transgression was? Is against, what? The, against God's law. It's the law. <laughs> you break the law. transgression against the law. Uh -huh. You break it, you don't have it. Now, listen if, it, if people don't like what we're teaching, that's fine. We're trying to help you. We're trying to stop this killing and stealing, robbing and all of these things. But I can't go out to dinner with you. Can't go out to dinner with you. Can't go out to dinner with you. Hallelujah. All right. Listen, let me tell you why. Verse number 10 says, If there come any unto you and bring not the doctrine... Receive him not unto your house. Now listen, that gonna do away with some of the people at your house. You know that, don't mm -hmm. you, brother? Amen. Read it again. If there come unto you, bring not this doctrine. Receive him not into your house. If somebody come and they don't teach the commandments, receive him not to your house. What are you gonna do with your best friend? <laughs> All that fish y'all cook down at the shop, yes. and the other stuff y'all do out there sitting in the chair. What are you going to do? Receive him not. <laughs> That's a hard one there. <laughs> Somebody text Joe Eddie and tell him he can't come back down Wayne no more. <laughs> <laughs> now, Joe Eddie will meet with me. I'm going to mess with him. Listen, daughter, do we have any questions? Listen, we'll be back uh, hopefully next Wednesday if the brothers can, but we'll be back this week. I mean, this month, as much as we can, all we're going to talk about is the commandments. I'm going to show you how much it's all throughout the Bible. We're just going to talk about it. So, brother, any of you all have anything? Come on, what you got? Just um, because we know that the world is, is lacking love. So, First John 5 and 2. And I went over in my message earlier, but we're going to go ahead and read it this time. And it says, by this we know that we love the children of God 
when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. And yes. then First John 4 and 16 also says, And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. And listen, we can go on. He's talking to John. This stuff can go on all night long. Come on, stand, brother. We love you. We appreciate your time on tonight. As Brother Wayne said, the word will bless you if you will allow it to. We love you again. We're praying for you. Um, just know that we're praying for you. We just we won't change. Sadly, we had some things that happen. Uh, it's a young man that's not far from this community. You know, I know things don't have to be the way that they are. Again, Pastor Pastor Adams, God bless you, my brother. Pastor Wade, Bishop Smith, Pastor Stevens, Ella Jemison, to all of our preacher brothers. And, you know, truly we thank God for you, man, to take time to, to uh, view us. Uh, Brother Cedric and Sister Darian, God bless you. Sister Mary, Sister Shanita, God bless you. Sister Nathalie, Sister Jennifer, Sister Abigail, God bless you all. Sister Kiana Mason, bless you. Sister Kiwana, God bless your daughter. Mother Chardetta, God bless you. Uh, our elder sister, Lady Criddle, God bless you. Mother Fanny B, God bless you. Uh, cousin, Brother R.C. Bowen, God bless you, my brother. And to all others that are viewing us, we thank God for you. Listen, to all of our daughters that graciously come out with us on tonight, traveling in the rain, coming all the way from Oxford and where, all the other places that you all have come from, truly we're grateful and thankful for you all coming to be with the city and with the men's on tonight. Um, um, we love you. We pray God's blessing over you. To each of you all, we pray God's blessings over you. God bless you. God keep you. God be gracious to you. God lift his countenance up on you. And listen, let me just do it this way. I, I speak blessings over your life. You can do the same thing that we're doing. Listen, God called us all as a whole kingdom of priests. You just need to be around somebody that's stirring up some things in your mind to teach you who you are. These young men, these guys are in their 20s, all of them in their 20s. We raised it up, two, got two back here that, that's four years old, raising them up. Wait, Jeremiah, out there, where you at? You over here? Come on, lift your hand and tell God hallelujah. Raise your hand and tell him hallelujah. Raise your hand. Come on, Jeremiah. Come on, do it again. Listen, listen, we're raising them up. Mason, my little grandson, my question, we're raising them up. So we pray God's blessings over you. We love you. Come on, brothers, grab your horns and give us three blasts as we release the blessings of God into your lives on tonight. Come on, brother. What up, lift your hands, saints. Come on, give him a shout of hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those guys letting those horns ring out tonight, ain't they? Listen, we speak blessing over the food. We love you. God bless you. Y'all, uh, uh, we're praying for you. We love you. Shalom to you. Y'all be 